Good morning, everyone. I am Bhanu Prakash. I am heading machine learning department in uh, Continental. So we work on uh, this autonomous driving and um, uh, related stuff uh, using AI and different uh, traditional techniques. So just I want uh, to walk you through uh, what are the different uh, the challenges, different techniques, what we use in order to achieve the autonomous driving. <clears throat> so. Um, so you know, every every year, uh, it's uh, it's about 1.25 million people die during uh, because of the road accidents, you know. And um, just to put this in perspective, it's like um, a fully loaded Boeing 747, which is collapsing every day, every working day. So this is this is the volume of accidents that are happening around the world um, in a year. So and the major research finding is that. Um, so it's the human error which is causing majority of the accidents. So uh, the autonomous driving is all about keeping the human out of the driving equation. So this is what is autonomous driving. And um, at Continental, we have something called Vision Zero. Uh, Vision Zero is like zero fatalities on roads. So this is what we aim for and target for. And all the products, what we deal with, um, we, we look into the safety of the, uh, you know, uh, the, um, safety of the, uh, the passenger or the, uh, the driver and the traffic participants, basically. So this is achieved using uh, something called sense, plan, and act. So what we sense, and then we do the planning, and then act accordingly. And just I'll give a quick overview of the product line. So what we have uh, at Continental towards the uh, ADAS or automated driving as well. So this is the Continental portfolio. If you see, um, so we are, um, we have uh, long range radar, short range radar, which is the uh, radar portfolio, which are majorly used for um, uh, uh, driver safety assistance like um, the EBA, the emergency brake assist, or the, the electronic steering control. Um, and apart from that, we have the camera, which is the most essential part of the um, autonomous driving. So the cameras, as in we have the stereo camera, as well as the, the mono camera. So it comes with optional uh, LiDAR feature as well, if you see here. And um, apart from these, uh, within the camera product portfolio, we also have something called surround view. Surround view is, it's like, uh, you know, um, you get the 360 degree view of uh, the surrounding environment around the, around the vehicle or the car or uh, a truck or whatever, so where it is fitted with. So basically you get a uh, complete 360 degree view without even turning your head, you know what's happening behind. So you get the view in front of your dashboard. So that's how we, uh, we have this uh, surround view cameras. And one latest entrant is the high flash LiDAR. So you might have heard about the LiDAR, sy LiDAR systems. Uh, uh, you, you know, if, the, if you have seen the, the driverless cars of Google or Waymo or uh, things like that, so there is a big dome which is uh, lying there and then keeps rotating and then gives the 360 degree, um, the depth information and things like that. So we have something called a flash fla high flash LiDAR, which is a 3D LiDAR system but it's a solid state. It's not a spinning wheel or uh, things like that, but it is a solid state. There's no mechanical movements, but it can capture the depth information clearly. So that's, that's the new uh, product which we are developing. And uh, so together, this constitutes our product portfolio for um, the sensors which we deliver to the OEMs, like you know, Daimler or um, uh, Volvo or uh, Geely or things like that. And apart from this, we have uh, recently uh, another solution called eHorizon Cloud Services. So wherein uh, this is the service where you get the HD map information. So once you have this uh, eHorizon, so on the way to automated driving, the HD maps are essential. I'll, I'll give a brief uh, in the coming slides. This is one service what we have in order to um, attain the self-driving uh, self or autonomous driving. And coming to the uh, SAE levels of uh, the driving automation. So basically, um, you know, the automated driving cannot happen in a day or two. You know, it's, it's a revolutionary uh, process and it has to be achieved o through evolution. So basically, there are some evolutionary steps you need to take in order to achieve the, the fully or the highly automated driving. So these are the levels that are defined by um, SAE, uh, it's called, uh, which is a consortium. So basically, you have uh, level zero wherein only the driver is uh, the major part, but there is no uh, machine which even assists or something like that. So whereas in level one, so uh, currently whatever we have the uh, something on ADAS or the driver assistance systems. So basic features like 
emergency braking assist. So it either does the lateral control or the longitudinal control. So these are, uh, that is taken care in the level one. And um, the level two is partial automation. So wherein it, it does the lane centering or both, both maneuvers, the latitudinal as well as the longitudinal, it should be able to take care. And this is where uh, we have uh, complete, uh, the, it only supports the driver. Whereas moving on to the next phase, the vehicle performs the driving functions partially or fully. So at level three, uh, uh, the definition from the SAE is like, uh, the human driver would get a um, warning 10 seconds a prayer before he takes over, basically. So basically, your, your, your vehicle will be uh, driving automatically. And at some point, if it feels that it is not comfortable in handling some kind of scenarios, some probably uh, roundabouts or uh, exit of the, the highway uh, the, or the autobahn. So uh, it gives a warning to the driver and then he has to take over. So that's where um, the complexity is. So some people basically skip this level three because in order to give a 10 seconds prior warning, you need to have a complete redundant system. You know, um, it should be able to judge and then it should be able to hand over to the human uh, driver, which some, auto, uh, some OEMs think that it is very difficult. So let's move on to the level four directly itself. So, so there is a, dis, uh, a discussion and debate that is going on. It depends on the, you know, uh, the OEMs basically. And level four is a, a kind of high automation. So wherein you have, um, uh, the, the, the driver can, you know, um, can keep his eyes off and then basically he can do whatever he wants. He, and uh, the driver does, uh, the, the vehicle does uh, drive by itself. So, and here, here also you get the warning, like if it is unable to um, drive or some unpredictable situation, if it wants to, if it doesn't want to, uh, you know, uh, go through. So it gives a warning, irrespective of uh, the driver takes over or not, if he takes over, it's well and good. And if it doesn't, if he doesn't takes over, he just goes aside, pulls off the car, uh, and then parks by itself, and then stops. So there is no, um, there is no mandate that uh, a driver has to uh, take over in between when the warning is there. And level five is about uh, complete automation. So irrespective of the different kinds of um, the road scenarios, urban scenarios, or off-roading, so everywhere it should be able to take care, which is a distant dream, basically. But yeah, we are on the way to uh, reach this high level of automation. So effectively, to just sum up, um, it is like, you know, here in this level three, you just, you can keep your hands off and then uh, the uh, vehicle drives by itself. And the level four is eyes off. So you can, you are, you basically, you know, you can do whatever you want and um, uh, your distraction is fine. So you can check your mobiles or you can uh, read books and all. And finally, it's mind off. So you can sleep, go through sleep and then um, the vehicle takes care of, uh, going from one destination to other. So uh, ideally there should not be a steering wheel uh, um, in the level five driving. And how at Continental we are uh, going through this. So we have uh, something called, um, we also take the um, evolutionary steps. Like we, first we want to achieve the end caps. So new car assessment programs are the ones which mandate, okay, these are the, uh, the safety features what you need to have for a particular OEM or the particular vehicle. So that's where if we comply with uh, these kind of uh, mandatory things, so you are effectively satisfying the automated driving capabilities as well. And the next step would be automated parking. So this is, uh, in this automated parking, it's like low maneuvering, a very constrained environment. So you can just come out of the car and then on a click of a button, it parks by itself at a designated location. So already we have these solutions uh, in uh, using surround view cameras and ultrasonics. And partly or highly automated driving, you have um, uh, something called the cruising chauffeur. So wherein on the highway, it can uh, take over, um, take the driving by itself. And finally, we achieve the self-driving. Coming to the building blocks, as I was mentioning, so we have something called sense, plan, and act. Like human while driving, so you, you sense the perception. Basically, you perceive things around while driving. And then you plan accordingly. Okay, so who is on my right and uh, whether I can take a, uh, you know, um, the lane change can I do or if uh, someone is uh, stopping um, the vehicle, so do I need to stop or do I need to maneuver to the left or right? So these are the plans that, that goes in mind. And then finally the act. Act is the one wherein you control the steering or the brake or the throttle, whatever. So in order to achieve all this, so we need to have the basic sensors like camera, radar and HFL and IMU. So these are the sensors what we have, uh, if you see uh, automated driving cars, so uh, it must have multiple sensors. So basically you're building a redundancy out of it. 
because one might work in one condition but not others. So you need to have it. So camera, if you see the, the, the essential part is camera, just like human has eyes, so, which are very important. So camera needs to be there in order to have uh, the static scene, scene semantics. Basically in order to understand, you know, that where are the traffic lights, what is the light showing, and similarly the signboards or the signs, traffic signs. And apart from that, the lane markings, you know, if you want to keep a lane or if you want to cut into the another lane. So you need to have the information related to that. And coming to the radar is one which, uh, the sensor which is um, robust according, um, with the weather. So any kind of weather conditions it will be able to handle. But it has its uh, limitations. Um, so especially with respect to, um, it cannot detect the objects properly, but then it can track the objects properly. So that is very useful. And HFL, as I told, uh, the, the LiDAR, the high flash LiDAR, so you have um, the all kind of scenarios like you, it gives the 3D point cloud and it gives a clear depth information. So which is essential in order to, uh, you know, um, predict or maneuver, especially in the, um, the automated driving, you need to have this information of depth. And IMV is one where um, there's something called inertial measurement unit. So it's part of the every uh, vehicle or the car. Um, so basically it gives where are you located? What is, what is the acceleration you are uh, at? And what is the velocity you are uh, going at? So this information is also needed in order to localize. So this is where, where am I? So that is the, um, the information that is given by the IMUs. So basically it gives the odometry information. And apart from that, the other blocks are like the V2X, the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, as in other speakers have already spoken about. So this is where the 5G and DSSRC and uh, uh, things like that. So these technologies, using the communication, so the vehicle to infrastructure or the vehicle to vehicle communication um, that happens basically. So if you consider the other uh, sensors are basically all our line of sight uh, um, uh, things which, which predicts, but whereas V2X if you say, so it can give information which is, you know, uh, which is not of a line of sight. So basically, let's say you have a, uh, around the corner what's happening, so a vehicle will communicate, hey, um, some, something has happened here, so you need to uh, be careful when while taking turn. So these are the communications upfront you get, so which is advantageous uh, in order to have uh, the automated driving. And the other thing is the HD maps. It's not like just uh, Google Maps. The HD maps is more like the information about the roads, uh, the, all the all the road semantics. So where are the lanes? Where are the traffic lights? Where are the traffic signs? So this information is given by the HD maps, which again is uh, really um, um, impo important block here. And uh, the GPS, again, this is for the localization. So basically, you need to localize where you are with respect to the, the 3D world. So that is one thing. And complete, uh, and finally, the SEM. So basically, what we call is a comprehensive environment model. So this gives the complete scene understanding. Okay, and uh, so this summarizes the advantages of uh, the different sensors where what are the different drawbacks of uh, sensors and what are that its performance. Let's say if you see the, the weather conditions, the camera is very bad in, uh, you know, performing during the, the rain, rain kind of scenarios or the glare and uh, the, the night, whereas other sensors might do well, especially the radar. And this, so this is the, the how the sensor's output looks like. So, you know, the first one, then the first quadrant, you can see the radar output, and the next one is the LiDAR, and the below is the camera, so which does the the lane centering and other things. So basically, effectively, all these sensors together will solve the problem of where am I and how is everyone else placed and uh, how do I get from point A to point B. Okay, coming to the actual part. So the AI um, in autonomous driving. So uh, already Mr. Uh, uh, Lement has uh, already described about the, uh, the techniques, the traditional or classic machine learning techniques which we use. Uh, wherein you have to, you know, craft, handcraft the features, basically something like hog, a hog feature or har and things like that. So in order to uh, come up with a, 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 to solve a particular problem, whether it be classification or regression, and then use this uh, traditional classifiers or uh, the PCA techniques or uh, the other uh, techniques. And finally you get the output. So in deep learning, you don't do that. So you have a big network, you have lots and lots of data, so you train the network and then it automatically learns the, um, um, learns what are the features and then it does the classification by itself. And then finally you need to uh, um, interpret the output and uh, take it. And so different networks like GANs or LSTMs or uh, CNs and RNNs are used. Okay, coming to the AI in AD. So, so this is a very, uh, very nice combination. You know, AD is a very 
big problem. In order to solve the traditional techniques like the computer vision or classic ML doesn't help or doesn't you know, um, uh, give much accuracy. So we need uh, very good accuracy in order to achieve the automated driving. So if you see uh, one example like the pedestrian detection of the, the Caltech uh, data set, so uh, the um, AI has improved by a factor of 10. So basically uh, the miss rate or the fault detection has come down drastically using AI. So these are some of the examples like pedestrian detection and depth uh, uh, detection. So, um, so another example where we use uh, AI is the, uh, currently in uh, Continental is the pedestrian detection at nights. So at nights, it's very difficult for even to hum for a human to interpret, you know, whether the pedestrian is there or not. And um, so, and even the traditional computer vision techniques, you know, of, um, fall flat basically. So this is where AI is really helping us. So especially in, uh, if you see the ResNet, um, the in this data set. So we used ResNet 50, and then we could improve the factor of, you know, improve the detection rate and uh, the uh, improve the, the complete uh, the factor by five. Uh, you know? And similarly, the pose estimation. So this is another important uh, thing what we need uh, in order to find out gestures or some kind of intention, so pedestrian intention. intention. So we need to have this um, um, pose estimation. So here we use adversarial pose nets. And um, so this is one example where uh, you can see um, the, uh, you know, it is detecting uh, a pedestrian walking and then carrying uh, the kid's bag. So there it determines, okay, some kid is going to come. And then it warns the driver. So uh, if you see here, you know, um, so that's how it, uh, so this model is trained for that basically. So, and other AI applications, what we use is in the semantic segmentation. Uh, especially if you see for the autonomous driving, this is very important. This is the first step. Um, so you need to understand the semantics, basically. So it's like, uh, you know, the roads and where are the, the, the lane markings, uh, or the, basically the, the road boundaries or the curbs and uh, the, uh, the objects or the, the cars and other things and the trees and buildings and things like that. So um, if you see here uh, in the first quadrant, so this is the semantic segmented output. And uh, we also use uh, AI to enhance the the sign detection uh, uh, performance, basically. So we use it even for the traffic sign detection and uh, the traffic light recognition. So basically, if you see the sign detection, so apart from the sign recognition, if you see this, this is some uh, new symbol, new sign called uh, uh, you know, smombies. So basically, if you see, this is one big problem again. So people started using mobile phones on the roads and then, you know, that causes trouble <laughs> in detecting, you know, for the other uh, uh, people. So this is, these are called smombies, basically, the smartphone zombies. Yeah, so you need to be careful about. And again, the free space detection and uh, something called a debris detection, which is uh, something like um, the last cargo, something is fallen on the road. So you need to uh, detect that as well. Okay, and uh, yeah, these are uh, some of the things. So this is the, um, basically if you see the AI in uh, action, so probably, so this is first is the pedestrian detection, so it has detected and it is doing the semantic segmentation of the road, basically in classifying and then segmenting the, the cars and the, the driveways or the uh, roads. And then, um, so basically there are some 12, 13 uh, classes it, uh, it categorizes, and you can see the, it has uh, defined the road boundary. And this is the traditional optical flow methods, so wherein you, using the, the motion vectors, it knows like uh, the, where the, what is the movement, basically here the pedestrian is walking from, you know, from right to left. So that is the, that it has detected. And finally, the depth. So this could be from the camera or the LiDAR. So you get the depth information, and you know, like, um, so how far or how near you are to the pedestrian. And to, just to sum up, so this is the complete, it gives the complete scene understanding. So if you see a pedestrian walking from left to right, and then there is a, the curb, so which is the road boundary, and then, um, so he's the, this is the direction, and the depth information gives, okay, at six meters, a pedestrian is crossing on the crossway, on the crosswalk, so this is detected by the camera, and then on, on a holistic front, you, you know, like, okay, a pedestrian is crossing, and then you need to come to a stop. So if it is human, they do intuitively, but for autonomous driving, you need to convey this, and then put things, and then convey the, the final decision. Okay, so some of the challenges. So basically, um, if you see AI, um, AI is very complex and uh, 
um, it has got, you know, um, it needs lots and lots of data. So in order to achieve um, uh, very high performance, you need to train it a lot. And then, um, so that is one major challenge. So especially in automated driving, so we do have lots of uh, data. So we have uh, um, the millions of um, uh, miles of recording data, which are labeled basically. And then in order to achieve qualify for uh, highly automated driving, so you, there is a condition that you need to, you know, drive for some around uh, 95 million or 100 million so that uh, if your algorithm works fine with that without any uh, accidents or things like that, so then it can qualify. So how do you drive that? So that much is impossible. So you need to simulate the data. So basically, effectively, we are using uh, different simulators like Carla or some open source simulators which are based on Unreal Engine and things like that. So this generate different scenarios. Basically, you need to augment the data. So not only we generate the scenarios, but also augment the data like the, with the data uh, in rainy conditions or you know different scenarios have to be recreated. If you have to get, uh, get these kind of scenarios by recording, it, is, uh, it takes ages. And uh, the complexity is much higher here. So there are uh, the millions of parameters you need to optimize and uh, the, the performance like Gmax, the compute figures. So, so that also need to be um, reduced a lot. And uh, coming to the challenges, so uh, what are the challenges, other challenges we have? So adversarial attacks. So these are some things like, like a human, um, uh, for a human it's like optical Ill illusions. So the adversarial attacks are something like uh, for the neural network. So it, it, it kind of uh, misleads basically. So if you see here an example, so the, uh, the traditionally you train the network for different kinds of inputs. What if the input gets, you know, disturbed or uh, perturbed with some noises? So how does it, the neural network reacts? So here in this case, if you see the semantic segmented output, so it is able to segment the pedestrians and the road walks and the cars and the trees and other things. But if you add that, if the input is added with some perturbed noise, it's, a, it's not any noise, but a, a kind of noise if you add, the network behaves totally different. So in this case, it is, you know, not even detecting the particular class here in this case, which is pedestrians. So for this, this kind of is, uh, thing is very dangerous because you know the automated driving, if someone fools it with the noise and it, uh, it doesn't detect pedestrians, there's um, high fatalities that are going to happen, right? So similarly, like um, a simple demonstration also has uh, happened wherein uh, a stop sign or uh, the turn right or turn left signs when they are pasted with uh, uh, graffiti or uh, kind of, uh, you know, um, some noise. So the neural network is, you know, uh, kind of um, misleading. So stop signs are getting detected as speed limit 45 or, and the other way. So this is one challenge what uh, um, the automated driving or AI is essentially facing. And uh, other thing is the explainability or the interpretability. So basically, um, AI or the, the neural networks cannot interpret data on its own. So we need to interpret um, uh, from that. And also it's more like a, as you go deep into the networks, you don't know um, so what each layer is conveying basically. So it's like essentially a black box. You need to interpret. So let's say for this example, the, um, an automated car from Google has hit the, uh, you know, uh, the sidewalk. So why it has happened? So you need to reason it basically. So otherwise it's very difficult to uh, you know, even the solve the problem, okay? So these are some of the challenges. And apart from that, just to summarize, so this is the classic techniques. Um, so the performance is poor and the scalability is poor. Whereas the deep machine learning, the performance is really good and the scalability is good and complexity is good. Only problem is with respect to the predictability and uh, the, the, the data engineering effect. So how you, model, so what kind of model you need to use, what kind of you know, um, hyperparameters and uh, what kind of um, the training and testing needs to be done. So these are some things which, um, uh, which are the, uh, the drawbacks of the machine learning. But effectively, if you see, uh, it performs well in uh, other aspects, which is um, really useful for autonomous driving problem. So what we are working at Continental, so basically, uh, we are doing the, the, uh, the deep learning architecture design, uh, training and validation, and we are try trying to solve the real world problems related to the computer vision, radar, LIDAR, and fusion, basically. And also the deep learning frameworks, if you see, so we use extensively the TensorFlow and Keras, T1, 
Tiano and a bit of uh, NVIDIA. And um, so currently, um, so the, the deep learning networks we are using on different, uh, the high performing computes like NVIDIA and RENSYS. So these are the platforms what we deal with in order to accommodate um, you know, uh, the uh, very complex neural networks or deep learning networks. And finally, uh, just to show the, the project or the, what we have, it's called CUBE, Continental Urban Mobility Experience. So it demonstrates the, the self-driving car. That is our uh, Robocard that is there in uh, uh, Germany currently. So it's a demonstration, but it uh, works in a constrained environment though, a uh, little bit. Uh, but it's fitted with all continental sensors and some ladders from other sensors, just to demonstrate the, the capability of you know, autonomous driving from continental. So with this, I conclude my talk. It takes about 20-25 uh, minutes to cover mm -hmm. what we can cover in 7 minutes or 8 minutes on foot. Okay. Actually, so is there a way to ensure that uh, it doesn't happen. I mean, there are no false positives, no false stops. Yeah. Okay. Because people, if they come within like uh, three chairs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then it would certainly stop. And okay. then it would wait for uh, for, uh, for uh, people to, to move away. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, see, as I mentioned, so autonomous driving cannot happen, you know, uh, in a day or two. So it takes some uh, time. So we need to evolve basically. So all these problems are definitely there with uh, autonomous uh, vehicles and. Uh, and especially currently, if you see, so people go in a defensive way rather than, you know, um, aggressive way. Um, so basically, if there are pedestrians, you hold back rather than, you know, going and stopping and scaring them, right? So all these uh, um, a kind of safety measures are inbuilt. And with respect to the route and other things, definitely, uh, probably that's an optimization problem which needs to be slowly solved. Uh, which, which route to take and uh, how uh, uh, to go about. But maneuvering as of now, it would be limited to speeds because, you know, if some fatalities happen and then it, everyone, like, you know, the Tesla's uh, incident, so which has, you know, um, raised a controversy like, do we really need to have an autom autonomous car when, uh, but they have kind of taken a revolutionary step, you know, like uh, without uh, warning the driver that, okay, it's not able to take or if there is any confusion, you need to hand over to the, hand, um, the driver as of now. Unless we have the maturity in, you know, the, the, the deep learning or AI should be able to take care independently. And multiple redundancies are also set. Um, so as I mentioned, the radar, camera and LIDAR. So in order to validate from multiple fronts, you know, uh, it's not only these sensors, but even the HD maps. So it knows like what path is there and what is the effective route it can take and if there is any... Um, uh, accident or uh, some kind of issue, so you need to take another path. So these kind of information comes into picture with the HD maps. And so together, uh, it, it takes some time, but definitely uh, this is the, uh, you know, um, the starting step, I would say. Thank you. Bhatt. Thank you. Uh, so actually, I understand it is very challenging to do. So my actually one question is that uh, related to that, Uneven road uh, like potholes, speed breakers. Yeah. What kind of sensors group actually helps in that way? Okay. That is a question number one. And question number two is that accuracy is at, at most important. Some false positive you do mm. uh, wrongly take it actually yeah. you can cut catastrophe. Yeah. So when you are designing this, you must be considering that actually one is the having the good accuracy, mm. high accuracy, and second is the uh, any. Uh, when you are designing software, it should not actually this because hundred percent uh, accuracy is not possible. Yeah, true. So whatever delta is there, precautions mm. for that, how you handle it. 
Okay. So, question number two is clear to you? Question number two is more like how do you handle the accuracy only? Right? Uh, if, uh, uh, accuracy, yeah. yeah. The delta is always there. You cannot yeah, make 100% yes, yes, any yes, time. Yes, yeah. And question number one is that how, what sensors are for the pothole and the potholes. Yeah. yeah, see, basically, uh, so we use, um, uh, again, here camera could be used just to detect, but it doesn't give the depth information. So uh, you need to have radar. So radar can be used for uh, pothole detection. So basically, you, you, know, uh, you detect some depth or some kind of pothole, uh, and then map it with the camera. OK, is there any uh, marking which resembles or looks like a pothole, and then detect. So it's basically a. Uh, so these kind of depth sensors have to be used, uh, especially in uh, the pothole detection. Okay, and coming to your next question, basically on the accuracy, yeah, definitely uh, nothing is full foolproof. You know, uh, as I mentioned, so even the smaller, uh, the the things can be misleading, especially with the perturbed noise. Even AI can fail uh, if you have seen the adversarial attacks. Uh, so slowly it evolves and then uh, as it matures it should be able to uh, learn from the mistakes and then um, build a uh, very robust uh, network so which can really help in uh, improving the accuracy. But every time if you see it's not like a simple problem of you know of a recommendation engineer or things like that. So wherein uh, here the problem is more towards there are infinite dimensions to, and the participants. So basically uh, the, it's not about just taking a path from A to B. So there are multiple uh, kind of uh, agents which are involved, uh, like pedestrians are there, and the weather uh, conditions, and the route, and um, uh, probably uh, uh, what other drivers, you know, like how they are uh, traveling. And um, so all these things come into picture. There are a lot of dynamics involved. So always there will be a problem. How much ever you solve, so there is always a kind of loop, uh, kind of uh, corner case which you always need to handle. Yeah, and then improve on it, yes. Yes, yes, yeah, basically as uh, uh, someone was mentioning in the other talk, so you uh, train the network in probably in the, um, in your servers and then again um, is either OTA or the over the air updates. So basically you can do that and update or probably you take it to the, the service station in order to improve the, the, the network accuracy. Yeah. Hello, sir. I have a question. Is uh, in uh, in case of partial automation, what kind of uh, mathematical model or mathematical algorithm can be used such that uh, vehicles will not collide? In case there is it, uh, it will not make an accidents. Um, <coughs> you mean the partial automation, as in uh, the? Um... Uh, only in the case of emergency, the driver mm -hmm. may take control. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, system may uh, take control. Okay. So here uh, it's like see the. Um, the mathematical model as in, uh, see, we do the comprehensive environment model. So what I mentioned, so this constitutes the fusion of all the sensors, all the information from the maps or from the IMUs or from the GPS. So apart from that, so you need to fuse that and then construct a, a complete, uh, you know, sense around the uh, environment, right? So you get the complete information or, and then you do the path planning. So basically while you are going, um, so here also we use uh, recurrent neural networks for that, the, the tracking and the, prob uh, the path planning. So basically you need to track how the other vehicles are, you know, maneuvering and uh, whether it is, is it safe to uh, take a, or do the lane change or you need to apply a, a brake ahead. So these are the effective uh, things that goes in parallel in tracking and um, object detection. So it's a complete uh, kind of end-to-end, -end, I would say, the deep learning what we uh, do there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so thank you, thank you Banu yeah. Prakash. Thank you.